So in this video today, we're going to identify some bad caps and go ahead and replace them on this Samsung power supply. So when we're going to replace components on the power supply, you need to make sure the power supply is discharged first. Some power supplies will just do it naturally and they discharge pretty quickly, others will not. But this cap right here holds about 450 volts, anywhere between 350 and 400. Um, if you happen to touch both sides of the both terminals on the inside of the board at the same time, you'll get a shock. It's not going to usually cause any permanent damage, but it can burn and it will certainly hurt and you'll probably drop the board. In order to make sure it's discharged, there's a few different ways we can do it. Firstly, we can unplug the TV and leave it for 24 hours, but when you want to work on the TV you're using, that's not quite so easy. The next option. Depending on the board, you can use your multimeter and check the voltage on it and it may have resistors in parallel that help to discharge. If it does that and it reads you know, below 50 volts, you're good to go and work on the board. Uh, the other way of doing it is using a resistor, one of the higher wattage resistors and touching it to both terminals on the underside and that will help to discharge it slowly. Don't take a screwdriver and put it across both terminals as you'll get a direct short and you can solder your screwdriver instantly to both terminals and possibly cause damage to other components on the board. So on this power supply we've identified some bad caps. So here is a, here are good caps right here. They have nice flat tops, no leaking, nothing's going on with them. And right next to them we have these caps right here and you can see that their tops are bolted up and they're also leaking out this kind of brown ooze. This means that they're defective. Every once in a while you will get caps that are defective but don't show signs like that. But almost every time you're going to see this puffiness and you're going to see if it's really bad fluid leaking out from them. So bad caps can manifest in a number of ways. You might find the TV will not power up or more commonly it's going to take multiple attempts for the TV to power up. Once it's on it's going to usually work fine but again, when you turn it off, you'll have to try multiple times to get it to turn back on. Over time, this tends to get worse as the cap starts to degrade even more and it will take more and more attempts to get the TV to turn on. Once in a while, if a cap happens to be in a slightly different place, you can sometimes get noise in the picture, but usually it's the issue with the TV starting up that's the main problem. So we've gone ahead and flipped the board over and if you're having trouble trying to find the cap that you want to replace. Sometimes if you just put your finger on the other side you can kind of pinch it kind of shows you exactly the location otherwise it can be a little hard to kind of locate them on the back. Now we know where our caps are. I'm gonna go ahead and use our Hacker 808 desold again and same thing we're just gonna heat up the joints let it melt, suck it up and the same on the other side and as you can see the cap actually dropped right out the board so we know it's removed. And we can go ahead and do the second one. Same thing, heat it up, vacuum it out, and the other side. And there you go, they both dropped out. Now the joints are clean and we can go ahead and put in our replacement caps. How about that? So here we have the original cap that we removed from the board and this is a 10 volt right here, 2200 microfarad and 105 degree cap. And it's really important that when we get a replacement cap we make sure we choose the, the same values. We can go higher if you have an 85 degree capacitor, you can go up to a 105 uh, and you can go up in voltage a little bit which we're doing on this one. So we've gone from 10 volts up to 16 but the microfarad value should stay pretty close. Sometimes you can't get an exact match and again just go slightly higher but try not to because that one's, that one's a little more important. The only other thing you need to make sure is the physical size of the caps. These are a little bit wider but they fit in and we've checked them on the board and when you put the two caps side by side they're not gonna uh, sit against any of the components and they fit in nicely. So a couple of things before we put this in the board, we have our new replacement cap and we're going to have to align a couple of things on the board. We need to make sure we have the negative side, which is usually has a band or a stripe and a negative sign. It also has a short lead in the positive side and we're going to have to make sure we put that in the right way around on the board. 
these caps are polarized and if you don't put it in the right way when you turn the TV on there's a good chance it'll explode. So for your safety and the functioning of the TV you need to make sure you get it in the correct way. So when you go to put in your replacement caps you have to make sure that you line up the the negative band with the markings that are on the board and they'll have like a hash mark and then the thicker border on one side make sure you line up that with that line and on this cap just because it's a little bit wider you can't see it but it is the same direction as this one so I made sure that the negative side is on this side and I'll do the same with the next one and then we can go ahead and flip the board over and start soldering it in place okay so we flip the board over and we have the caps in place and we left the lead sticking out and I've just kind of bent them over and kind of kept them in the same direction as the trace this way you kind of help prevent shorts and you can kind of see that they have these little pads just kind of bend it over the same way it'll stop the cap falling back through and once we've got it in place we can solder it in place we can go ahead and trim those off and it'll be ready to put back in the TV so we're going to take our flux we are using the rosin core but the flux just helps it flow a little bit better and get right into the joint I'm going to paint that on both of those and then I'm going to take my soldering iron and just make sure it's clean and take the solder and go ahead and heat both the pad and the wire as best I can and we'll give it a second so it does help if you turn the soldering iron on first like I just didn't so now we have a hot soldering iron we can go ahead and solder our joints so we're going to heat both points the pad and the wire and then try and add our solder in and flow it along and the same on the other side wait for it to heat both up and flow it along and the same with this one and there we go okay so now we've got those soldered in place we can go ahead and take our wire cutters and just snip them off like so okay and now we can take our brush and our isopropyl alcohol and just give it a little clean up a little scrub now we flip the board over you can see our replaced caps right here and the originals there and this should be good to go we can put it in the TV and check it out if in the future it gave you more issues, you want to go back in there and just double check it, make sure none of these caps are popped. If you wanted to make sure, you could go ahead and replace these right now, but these all look really good, so I wouldn't personally bother with these right now. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings.